Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Sohini from South Bay, California and I welcome you today. For anyone who's tuning in, this is the channel where we talk about anything AI. And in the last you know, week's video, I had mentioned that you know, towards the closing of, of the year, I'm gonna share more pointers as to how to prepare for AI machine learning or tech job interviews, you know, in, in general. So today I wanted to present five important tips in order for you to succeed in an initial call with the hiring manager for a technical job. So this job could be for data science, it could be for machine learning, it could be for an internship, full-time role, even for a contract role. So the, if you follow this, the, the tips and the strategies, it is going to ensure that you put your best foot forward and succeed in the interview process. And again, this is all from all of the experiences that I have had from being on both sides of the interviewing process as an interviewee and as an interviewer. So if any of these uh, you know, content is of interest to you, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel. So in this video, we are going to learn about five important strategies that is going to help you put your best foot forward and crack that first round of technical interviews with your hiring manager. All right, and in the next video that I'll be putting across, that is going to show more in-depth, uh, you know, pointers as how to crack the, you know, the, the one-day on-site interview. So let's start with the strategies. Step number one: recalibrate your mindset. What that means is I'll give you two examples of how to approach your mindset before you even you know, take that initial hiring manager call and you will see how just changing your mindset can really help you open up and be the best version of, an, of a candidate on that day. So let's consider that you have seen this job description which is absolutely excellent for your background. You just love the job. It's like your dream job. And then you start thinking you know, in, in your head that you know, I love this job. I, I really think uh, you know, I I, I want to do this, but what if they don't like me? What if uh, they, 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 I, I don't have enough experience? What if I'm lacking? And the very next thought that will come in your head is, I'm nervous, you see? So as soon as you build a particular job up to, to the level that it starts scaring you, then at that point, you are not your best version anymore, right? Instead, let's, let's talk about another way in which you can attune yourself. If you look at a job description and you say, hmm, this is really interesting. I think I can use my job skills or, or my skills in order to do this in a very good way. However, I'm not sure if they will value me. Maybe uh, I need more experience. Maybe, you know, I'm not a right fit for their culture. So I wonder if, if I will be a right fit for it or not. And then you say, okay, now you approach your, your job interview with a, an open mindset, which says, hmm, I wish if I were a fit, but I want to know more. As soon as you shifted your mindset, now you're not nervous anymore. Now you want to ask more questions to the hiring manager. So that whenever the hiring manager says, okay, any questions for us, now you will ask about you being a potential fit as well. So whenever you're interviewing, Take care that your mindset should be, it's of course the interviewing uh, interviewer is trying to find if you are a fit or not, but you are also trying to figure out if you are a fit for that role or not, right? Whenever you, you see it as a two-way street rather than only a one-way street, your energy shifts and you take control of, of, of the interview process rather than giving your power away to the hiring manager, in which case again, the only possible conclusion is I am nervous, all right? so. In order to not be nervous, you just need to approach the problem using the mindset that I wonder if I am a good fit for this role or not. And as soon as you think of it that way, you're not gonna be nervous anymore. Now tip number two, and again, this is a, one of the most common uh, questions that is asked is, tell me about yourself, right? And tell me about yourself is a little different for technical jobs um, than it is for you know any, any of the other jobs. Because in this case, most of the time, the hiring manager wants to hear what are some of the exact skill sets and which is why you are applying to the, to the company. So uh, typical examples can be, okay, you know, I am such and such, I've done my graduation from, from this uh, university, my specialization was this, and this is the reason why I am applying to your company. However, if you now, 
you know, attune it to say, I'm applying for, for, you know, this particular job in your company because I have done this particular capstone that matches the requirements that you're looking for in this particular job. I have a, a significant C, C++ or Python experience. I've done a lot of, you know, ML model deployment. I've done a lot of optimization because of which I believe, um, you know, I, I got attracted to the job description that you had posted. Now that would be a complete example of describe yourself you know try to always finish it by saying why you are applying for that particular job all right so tip number three and again it's a very common problem or very common question that is asked is tell me about your favorite project or tell me about your latest project and uh, this is not a trick question but typically if you go through your resume and let's say that you've added all the projects that you know you have uh, you have worked on but now let's see that it, let's consider that you're a computer vision you know engineer um, you've you've trained to be a computer vision engineer and you've you know worked on uh, some data science projects and then you've worked on some computer vision projects but the the projects that you've gone mostly in depth with are data science projects correct so in that case you should say my favorite project is the data science project because they will have time to come back to ask you, okay, what about the computer vision project? Can you tell me a little bit more about it? But if the question is, tell me about your favorite project, it should be the project that you are most confident about. You should know everything in and out, you know, right from data pre-processing to, uh, you know, data wrangling uh, to, to, to the modeling, data augmentation, and again, even the output metrics. So you should know this whole process as good as possible, right? So your favorite project project should always be the one that you know the most about along with the along with you know preparing for the project that you know is is your favorite you should also prepare for the project which may not be so much of a favorite but which is which you think is the most relevant to the job that you're applying to right and that could be the very next problem that you know interviewer comes to what about the computer vision problem uh, tell me a little bit about it so in those cases let's say that you've done image semantic segmentation but you don't really know the differences between you know up pooling and 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 you know down sampling and that could be a problem so these are the things that you need to brush up on uh, you know before you even go into this this uh, you know the, the interview because your confidence will show if you start coming coming up with these very detailed aspects of your model and explaining it or, or you know uh, giving it in advance uh, you know to to your interviewer your confidence will show and they will then you know understand that you you clearly have have done your due diligence however the next question which is pretty common that comes up is tell me about a team effort experience so because in industry you're typically never alone right so you're not working as a solo uh, you, you're not a lone wolf so in that case you really need to come up with some experiences or examples where you deliver a product or a project in a team that could be a capstone project that could be um, even something as as small as as a, as a group effort that you did maybe over you know virtually so whatever it is but make sure that whenever you're going into an industrial example you should try to come up with an example which was a team effort and you may have a very small role in that particular uh, you know project but make sure you've walked it through in your head and you're able to explain it why your piece was significant to the completion of the project or if you were able to detect some flaws because of your working experience how you know looking or, or fail fast right how looking at, at those failures quickly was able to help the project succeed in a timely manner so always prepare an example of where you were a part of a team project finally tip number five and the most important of it all you will see at the end of most uh, you know hiring manager calls there's a question any questions for us and that is your window in order to gauge if you are the right fit for the company or not. Most of the time I've seen, and again, this, this is again from personal experience, is I've seen people generally say, you know, I don't have any questions, but that is somehow not the right way to go about it. If you have done your due diligence, if you have you know, looked at the team, if you've looked at the composition, there should be something that, that you, you know, have a question in your head to figure out if you're the right fit for it. And if not, I can tell you the question that I always tend to ask. I always ask, if you had the ideal candidate on the call right now, what would be the skill sets or the backgrounds you would be expecting? And this is a very open-ended question. 
And this question actually cements the call that you've had so far, because now the interviewer starts thinking, okay, you have these particular skills X, Y, you know, Z, and, and, and so on and so forth. And I am also looking for somebody who has the skills X, Y, Z. So now they are starting to find the commonalities between the job description and the profile that you have. So asking a question like that is the smart way in order to leave the job call at a, at a good end so that you, you understand the hiring manager has really got uh, a hold of the job skills or the skills that you were trying to portray that match up very well with the job description. So these are absolutely fine questions to ask. And the more you ask, the more you learn about the team, the more you figure uh, if it's it's a right fit for not a right fit for you or not. And and that is equally important as giving a good reflection to the hiring manager. So these were the five top strategies that I have found extremely important for technical job calls. And the next video is going to be about cracking the on-site or the, you know, the virtual uh, job interview on the particular day. So stay tuned.